The first and foremost is uh, in terms of uh, uh, political compulsions in Gujarat and Maharashtra, even Maharashtra at the time it is had the problem. So all these things came up after the Urban Land Sealing Act that was way back in 1976 and then the master plan simultaneously advocated this. So to overcome that Urban Land Pooling, uh, I mean the Sealing Act, the land pooling happened uh, which was lot of exemptions are there within the Pulium, the Land Sealing Act in which the co collector can give some exemptions to that. So they, that was used as a conduit for the overcoming that Urban Land Sealing Act and the land pooling was done at the time voluntarily by the people at themselves especially by the farmers and uh, that became popular because of that easy way to overcome that rule. Now in the case of uh, that's true of even Magarpatta and other places where it happened, you can say, to a great extent. Okay, not necessarily that it is the motive behind it. Where in the case of uh, Andhra Pradesh, uh, it is something different. It's uh, Urban Land Sealing Act has been removed way back in 1999 and uh, so many things happened after that. Here the system, uh, the more in terms of one, competing with the governments, I mean between the state government of Telangana and uh, this one, one. Second, there is a necessity, there is a compulsion to establish a capital. So it is something like a possessiveness, okay I should have, I want to have and how quickly I can have. These are the three driving force behind it. In which the, it was felt that okay we need to have our capital, how best we can mobilize the resources for that. So there are two kinds of mobilization, one in terms of financial mobilization, second in terms of land mobilization. So first the land was taken up along with the mo uh, mobilization of funding also. And uh, it is one the political commitment and to how what force has driven that is a political commitment. Uh, if you go into detail that even the Minister for Urban Development, Dr. Narayana, he sat in the villages telling the people please come forward and do the thing. It is not one day, two day, it is continuous, almost three months he sat down. Okay, along with all the officials, then and there the transaction takes place, the pro promissory notes were given. So it is a political commitment which has driven the whole thing, which assured the people okay something is going to happen. Okay. And simultaneously there was a bigger picture was also shown to them that okay we will build a capital is much better than even Hyderabad. So this kind of a, you can say dream building plus the commitment, political commitment and uh, commitment at the lowest level, you know, this has driven that enabled the process of land pooling. Okay, first foremost is that as I said again I repeat it at the cost of repeating, the first is the political commitment for this entire development process. If you want to develop uh, a state or a capital or even a slum, first <coughs> it is a good example how the politician should be the leader in taking it to the people that okay we want this, we want this kind of development and uh, to take it further. Uh, once that comes in, people start listening. When he said okay we will do and then next day nothing happens, then it is not possible. Here it is a followed up also, it is not that when the when the people say that okay I am willing to give that land, it is followed up by the process of uh, file transfers and title transfers, all the things happen simultaneously because of the presence of the minister, because of the presence of the entire official done there. You know that makes the things more and this is a very good learning process, okay, in a particular in a democratic state, how it happens, it is something very good about it. Going to the people is the main forum and uh, the newspaper media also played a very big role in this. You can say both uh, for as well as against if there is any opposition because initially everything was uh, in the formative stages there is a lot of confusion and it, it definitely prevails everywhere. Okay? In the formative stages because of lot of speculation because it is also associated with locating the capital where it is be, uh, it has to be located. Okay, how it has to be located. So as and when the capital things, uh, the team appointed by the central government was going, there are a lot of speculation about land. Okay. So once it was announced, oh it is going to be here, okay. 
and media also played a bigger game in that in terms of announcing that it's going to be here. So it's not that openly they say you come and participate, but that assured the people that okay, capital is going to be here now. Let's do something about it. So that is one form. Second thing is. Uh, as I said, the officials along with the politicians going there and then doing it, okay, that is something which is very, very important. And uh, the vision of the CM, Chief Minister, okay, who wants to build something better than what he has built. He is a capital builder. Okay, that is something, I mean in the post, uh, I can say the post-independence period is one of the real visionary whom I have come across personally and who has built a Hyderabad high tech city and then now he is planning for this. So with that kind of vision and that kind of uh, political commitment reaching the people, there is something you know it is bound to happen and it may be through voluntarism, maybe sometimes you have to use even compulsions also. So at least when they announce that okay we need this much of land for the capital, that is almost 80 percent or 70, uh, per, okay, 80, 85 percent of the land was pulled and promised okay we are giving to them, people about this. The Capital City Advisory Committee consists of uh, many ministers, you can say uh, urban development and also uh, even central minister is also involved and various uh, MPs of that area, Guntur as well as Vijayawada and other area and MLAs of different uh, thing. Their main first I mean because I am also part of that per capital advisory committee. Okay. In fact, just now there is a meeting also going ha happening just now at the CM. Now the thing is uh, first we went into okay once we decided that this is going to be the capital and once the act was passed on the CRDA, our first job is to get that uh, plan getting prepared. In fact, it was uh, once the plan was prepared, it was before the CRDA came into being, the Singapore government and other thing uh, promised that okay, we will build the capital and we will help you in building the capital and they came out with a plan. When the plan was announced, then it is a question of how do you implement it. The first is the land. So how do you go about in doing the thing? Then and there it was advised, okay, now the Minister of Urban Development will be going there to pull the land pooling system assisted by any MPs and any this thing. In fact, that is the system in the capital advisory, the first task. Now from that point, now it is a question of what should be implemented, what should be, the, I mean in fact we discussed even about the road design, what should be the kind of road design, is it like a grid and iron pattern or zigzag or how is the thing, what will be the more economical, okay, how to overcome that and then what kind of high city we require for this city to govern. Okay. So there are many issues that goes in and in the debated one by one and what should be the priority. And the immediate priority in fact the thing is how do we shift the capital as quickly the capital function, how quickly we can bring it from Hyderabad to this area Amaravati. So that is the main thing which has been even discussed you know because there are political compulsions, there are economic compulsions and there are you can say when um, people's compulsion because every time they had to go to uh, such a far off to make the decision because still the seat of power is in Hyderabad. So how do you bring this? Though there is a camp office of uh, CM here in Vijayawada, but still how quickly we bring all those functions to this area so that it becomes economical for the people also to go uh, back and forth to get their things done. So this is another thing which is. Uh, right now see what happened once the capital plan was announced, once this thing was announced, there is some kind of a freeze because we are not able to give, go ahead and then give that okay this is the land because the zoning was not done at that time. Okay. But before this capital project was announced, the prices went up like anything. As I meant, the, I was telling you, the capital uh, team was going around, the central team. The prices went up a bit overnight. Okay. Almost 10 times, maybe sometimes uh, even 30 times. Okay. It went around and uh, it is a speculation. Okay. When the, it is announced in the paper, okay, this place has got a better place for this capital location, immediately the price is shot up. Now, many of them got bitten by that viral of the capital price movement. 
and now the many uh, people, uh, real estate operators lost this stall quite a bit. I mean, uh, they expected this to go up, so they acquired uh, so much of land. Now they are not able to meet that uh, situation. Now it's almost like a lull which is happening. But definitely the property prices have gone up several times, okay, several percentages. Once I will uh, give an example on that this whole capital location was identified. In some of the areas of the Amravati area, some of the villages where I traveled and interviewed the people, the prices went up from 27 lakhs to now almost on 1.2 crores to 1.5 crores. Okay, that's a sorry within a short span of three months. Okay, the same land, okay. and uh, the main problem is most of them are agricultural land. Okay, and fertile, very fertile because of the Krishna basin. Okay. So, the task is how to minimize that loss in terms of green okay. and uh, to a greater extent this uh, you can say hats off to Singapore team, they maintain that green but to a greater extent. I cannot say that it is 100 percent is possible, but uh, to a greater extent they did it. The court has said, okay, if, if it is a voluntary, then there is no intervention of the court. The court has come to that only one thing which has happened is the compensation to be paid, how quickly they get the compensation. Now, it is something like a consumer and the producer, right, okay, supply market here, right. Uh, there is a label which is written that the maximum price is this much. When the person charges more, okay, naturally I can go to court, this uh, consumer court. So, similar the case what happened that because of the delay in the release of the compensation, uh, the, some of them have gone to court and the court has said in case you are not interested to willingness to give the land, you can take back the promise renewal which you are given to the government. Uh, that is all they said, okay, that is one. The green court again there was a PIL with the green court, the green tribunal and uh, it came up just two days back. Now, 19th of August it came up and 18th of August it came up. Now, the main situation there is that it, uh, they argue in terms of food security, whoever has given the litigation. They talked about the food security for the state as well as for the country because it is a very rich fertile land. Now, I do not know how far it is true. Definitely one thing is there, the Krishna and Go, uh, this Guntur, this district put together including Godavari, it is a rice bowl. Okay. And some districts produce at par or even more than Punjab in terms of rice cultivation per hectare productivity is much higher. Now, in the case of Gunt and also see we have to understand that even within the small land which is available for urban, okay, the urban density is quite high in Krishna as well as in Gunto. These are the two districts which are more urbanized than any other districts. Now, within that the loss even if it is a 2 percent or 3 percent in terms of food, definitely can be compensated by Godavari belt which is again a rich high, I uh, mean you can say productivity area, more productivity in fact that area. In Guntur it is more in terms of commercial cropping, tobacco and cotton, okay. And again it is compensated by the expansion in the other side of the Guntur where there is no capital this thing. So that way it is uh, quite good. The challenge, main challenge in terms of this whole thing is to put in the infrastructure. How quickly it, they put in the infrastructure, that means the administration in making the capital work because we so many uh, highways crisscross this area. Okay. Vijayawada is a hub of in terms of railway traffic as well. Okay. So, for the entire north that is a connectivity, entire east it is a connectivity junction. So, how quickly they put in this all this infrastructure and uh, speed up the whole development process, that is the biggest challenge the AP government has to face, okay, for which it requires a huge resources and uh, still it is not a decided where from it will come from. The existing towns are or the metropolitan city of Vijayawada, on the other side is Guntur which is class 1 town. Now, Vijayawada is commercialized, completely commercialized a trade activity and it does lot of regional function rather than the city function it funds, uh, it acts as a hub for the entire region. So also Guntur, Guntur developed from a marketing place for the agricultural marketing to now what is, what 
practice that we see in terms of uh, agro based industrial production or related to that area. Okay. In both the places it is a turning from standard of uh, agriculture dependency to tertiary sector dependency. And uh, the agriculture productivity is decreasing in both the states, okay, it is both the districts sorry not the state. Now the new state which has been called is also called as sunrise city as a sunrise state. Now, the ambition is quite high. Okay. They want to put it across in terms of ICT, in terms of industries, in terms of this one. Um, now the problem is in terms of industrial thing there are not many drivers other than the major like a petrochemical complex is coming up. What is going to give the boost to the entire state is going to be the eastern corridor okay, which is going to start from uh, it is funded by the ADB uh, Vishagapatnam to Chennai. Now that will propel lot of uh, urbanization process in the whole process. So far there is not much of in terms of planning or implementation the master plan or anything it never adjusted to this existing system. Okay. Now the new how it is going to adjust it depends upon what is that uh, role CRDA is going to play in putting a plan which is flexible, which is dynamic, which can accommodate this new development like ICT development or this software parks and everything. It is a biggest challenge because even the design if you see the which is uh, uh, given by the Singapore government. Okay. It is something mind boggling okay. with lot of uh, connectivity, lot of uh, this thing. How that is going to be controlled or regulated in the long run process say 10 years from now even if I make that city tomorrow, how am I am going to sustain that city? It is the biggest challenge for which regulations are required okay. uh, for which capacity has to be built in. Now I am glad okay, I'm, as I said I am part of that uh, team development. Even at the zonal level now we have urban designers, okay, whatever assertions have been made with well taken by CRDA, landscape, housing, environmentalist, even transport planner at the zonal level which no other development authority in the country is having. Now I am really happy to state that the CRDA came out with almost 800 uh, post positions with uh, and also place making and economic development, local economic development. So with this kind of a team at the local level I am sure it is going bound to be a successful provided I mean the resources are committed for this purpose. So it is a more in terms of advocacy one and how best the capacity building is very very important here. How do you go about and then saying that uh, what kind of capacity is required you know in terms of capacity uh, gaps which is to be filled up at various levels like say for example how do you come out with the local economic development process, how do you come out with the uh, tools for place making, now what kind of place you want to make okay? and what kind of design appropriate for that level. Okay? This kind of knowledge is still lacking, in fact we are uh, trying to find out what is place making and what kind of uh, you know background that will fit in, is it an urban designer, is it an architect. Okay, because we do not have a course in this country on place making. So what kind of person is suitable for this? Then with lot of research okay, I said okay, for the time being let us put urban designer. Okay. So at least they will think in terms of what is place making. But is it the right way or is it some other way? Okay, that is a, a question which we are asking ourselves. So it is a thing is how best we can put in all these things. The, not only Indian but this uh, Habitat Institute or uh, IHS or even SPAs how they can, it is beyond that how do you build the capacity at various level because finally it boils down to how the implementation okay, how is going to be done and how it is to be monitored for the next 20 years because this is a capital building is not one day exercise. So it is a question of how do you monitor that entire development process and regulate it to the channels which is envisioned in the plan, you know, that is what it is going to be.